Good morning. Good morning. We are now live on Facebook and YouTube, and I see people are logging on as we speak. So welcome aboard. Thank you for joining us for another another week of lockdown inspiration with our daily learning session. I love seeing those numbers tick up on Facebook, YouTube. You guys are fantastic. Loyal students you are. So well done for that. I see people are logging on as we speak, so let's give it a minute or so. Thank you all for being with us, joining us again. Boker Tov, please got a great week ahead. Morning, good morning. Okay, I see everyone's logging on. I'll be greeting you in just a moment, but if you are still <clears throat> logging on, just let us know you're here, you're with us. Okay, let me say hello. Who's here? Who's greedy us, greeted us this morning? Okay. So a very warm welcome to Jaime and Linda Drew, Anne Hack, Bernice Kraus, David Ginsburg, Alina Delovitz, Tracy Mindel. Thank you for that. Felicia Jenks, Shalom Trigger, Eleanor Kotkus. Thanks for that. That's all on Facebook. If you're still logging on, let us know you're here. Fantastic. And on YouTube, who do we have? Dennis Solomon, Cheryl and Diamond, Manfred Kalmick, Maura Dworkin, Sega, Shelley Smith and Daryl. I wish you guys long life after Daryl's loss of his mum. Wish you richus yomim. And please God comfort for you and your family. Ian Clemenson and Stephen Hur. Yes, we'll learn in memory of your mother, Esther Bat Moshe. Also, Le'ilu Nishmat. In memory of the Neshama of Daryl's mother. Daryl, maybe you'll post your mother's Hebrew names here for us to have her in mind during our learning today. Just post it there in the comments. I see people are still logging on as we're speaking. Where's our Cape, where's our Cape Town contingent? Or Israel contingent? If anybody's logging on from overseas, let us know you're with us. We'd love to welcome you. Hi, Fager. Thank you to Esty for her share yesterday. Great. I'm happy you enjoyed it. Excellent. Miriam Bat Abba David. Good. Thanks, Daryl. Miriam Bat Abba David. We wish you a richus yomim, hanushama shevin aliyah, a spiritual elevation. Okay. I see people are here for another week. Here we are. Morning, morning to one and all. So, today's topic relates to the nine days, but it also relates to the parasha we just read, Parashat Devorim, the first book of the, the first parasha of the new book of Deuteronomy, of Devorim. And I came across something very, very interesting, which I, don't want to, which I wanted to share with you this morning. As we know, the book of Deuteronomy of Devorim is pretty much a repeat where Moshe Rabbeinu goes back over the episodes that took place in the desert. It's called Mishnah Torah. Why is it Mishnah Torah? Because it's, it's, it's a second time round. So it's a second time round and Moshe is repeating the story of the journey of the Jewish people. Thanks, Stephen Hurt. Louise and Lionel Rubin, good to see you. Hi, Dawn Olov. It's here. We are having a shear. Thank God I have electricity. Oh, I'm grateful for that. That's for sure. Avril Walpert, Marlene Schur, good morning. Thank you. If you're just logging on, let us know. We've got over 35 viewers here this morning between Facebook and YouTube. So great to have you all here. Yeah, Marlene Schur, I got your message there at the bottom. Good morning, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. Simchas, Simchas, please go with everybody. So, Moshe Rabbeinu is repeating. He's going over the stories 
of the Jewish people and their and their experiences. And one of the thing he one of the things he highlights in last week's parsha, Parshas Devarim, he highlights the episode of the spies. And he says that because of the episode of the spies, as a result, you are not going to go into the land of Israel. Moshe. Well, Moshe tells the Jewish people, you, the generation of the Miraglim, the generation of the spies, are not going to go into the land of Israel. In fact, you're all going to die besides your children. Right, The next generation are going to go in. But those who are part of the generation of the spies are not going to go into the land of Israel. And then he says, besides, besides Kolev ben Yefune, besides Kolev, and as we spoke about this, we spoke about this a while, a few weeks ago, about Kolev getting the portion of Hebron, because he walked all the way to Hebron, to Daven, at the gravesite of Abraham, Mitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, and Leah. He went to Daven there, therefore he got Hebron. So the verse says that besides Kolev, a colleague won't get the portion. So colleague will get the portion. The rest of the nation won't get the portion. Everyone else is going to die. That's colleague. Now, one other person also was with colleague. One other person also merited the same promise, and that was Yehoshua. Okay, that was Yehoshua. However, What's interesting in the Torah is when you when you read these verses, through the verses of Devarim, we're talking about we're talking about verse chapter one, verse five, Lamed Hay onwards. Hi Brian Owen. When you look in the verses, the verses look out of order, and we know that. Torah can be out of order, but the out of orderness has to be justified. If the Torah is out of order, it has to be justified why it's out of order. And here we've got something very, very interesting that catches the attention of many commentaries, from the Abar Benel to the Ramban, and many others pick up on the uh, the out of order, non chronological order of the Psukim. It says that Kolev will obviously go into the land. Then it stops. And it addresses something about Moshe. And Moshe says, God was also angry with me, Moshe says. God was angry with me because of what you did. You complained about the water, if you remember. You forced me or you pushed me into hitting the rock rather than speaking the rock to the rock. And as a result of that, I too won't go into the land. That's the key verse here I want to focus on today. Moshe Bain is saying, in the middle of everything, he's talking about the spies, and he's talking about Kolei ben Yefune going into the land, and he's about to talk about Joshua going into the land too, but in between Kolei and Joshua, he stops and he says, but God was also upset with me because of what you had done. He was upset with me because of your complaining over the water and the fact that you pushed me to hit the rock rather than speak to the rock and I too won't go into the land. And then he stops that again. And then he goes to say, and Yehoshua will also inherit the land like Kolev. So Kolev and Yehoshua will inherit the land. But Kolev is one verse. Yehoshua is two verses later. And what's the middle verse? Moshe Beno reflecting on what happened to him. That God was upset with me, and as a result, I won't go in, and neither will Aaron go in. The verses look very strange. The order here looks very, very strange. And the commentaries pick up on this. And they say, what's going on? If you're talking about Kolev and Yehoshua being the only two people who are going to go into the land, and they're going to inherit the land, then talk about Kolev and Yehoshua. You know, talk about Kolev and Yehoshua being the ones to inherit the land. Why do you stop in between Caleb and Yeshua, in between the two heroes of the story of the spies? You stop and you're discussing Moshe. You're discussing Moses and what happened to him. And it was a completely different episode. It had nothing to do with the spies. What is that verse doing there in between the two phrases?
Before I elaborate on the question, I'm going to stop here for a second and I'm going to welcome you all here for coming online with us. We've got over close to 40 viewers. There's close to 40 viewers online right now between Facebook and YouTube. So thank you for joining us. If you're just logging on, maybe put a comment in the comments box. Say hello, a greeting, a good morning. Um, or a question, if you have one, we'd be happy to uh, hear your questions too. So let me share with you what some of the commentaries say. Some of the commentaries tell us that Moshe Rabbeinu was punished not only, excuse me, not only because of hitting the rock, which is revolutionary, because we all know, if it, you ask us all, right, simply speaking, why was Moshe punished and why is Moshe not going to the land? We would all respond. What do we respond? Because he hit the rock. That's the famous story, because he hit the rock. Comes along the commentaries. Hi, Ronnie Kotkus. Good morning on YouTube. Come along the commentaries, and the commentaries tell us that here in the book of Devarim, we see an insight. Moshe Bain will fit this verse in. God fit this verse in to teach us something that we didn't know yet. And it's teaching us that Moshe wasn't only punished because of the hitting of the rock. Moshe had another sin. And that was being part of the story of the spies. It's unbelievable. The Orachayim HaKodesh says this. The Abar Benel says this. The Ramban Nachmanides hints to this. They say that Moshe also was punished because of the sin of the spies. And that's why this verse was inserted into the discussion. Oh, good. Brian Owen says a leader needs to be responsible for the actions of the people. Absolutely. But what's mind boggling is it doesn't say this anywhere in the Torah. It doesn't say anywhere in the Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu was punished because of the spies. This is an insight that comes from the commentaries on Parshas Devarim when they notice this one verse that sticks out, this verse that seems to be you know, random in this topic. Is coming to teach us that Moshe had something, excuse me, Moshe had something to do with the sin of the spies. And he too was punished for this sin. What did he do wrong? What did Moshe Beno do wrong? And why should he be punished for it? Right? It's a fair question. What did Moshe do wrong and why should he be punished for it? So there are two answers for what Moshe could have done wrong. Number one, as Brian says correctly, a leader is responsible for the actions of the people. If the people fail, the leader fails. That's the bottom line. If the people fail, the leader fails. We, we have that. <coughs> we had that as well when Moshe Rabbeinu climbed the mountain. For the giving of the Torah, right? The famous Ten Commandments, Matan Torah. He went up to the mountain to receive the Luchot, the tablets. And by the time he came back, the Jewish people were now serving the idol. God says to him, Go down. In other words, Moshe, get off the mountain. Why should Moshe get off the mountain? Okay, it happens to be that the 40 days and 40 nights were coming to an end. But the, the verse says, Get off the mountain. And the commentaries explain that Moshe had to get off the mountain. Why? Because the Jewish people had fallen. The Jewish people were no longer on a high level. And because they weren't on a high level, you, Moshe, don't deserve to be on a higher level either. Because the whole reason why you're a leader of Klal Yisrael, the Jewish people, and the whole reason why you're standing on the mountain for the receiving of the Luchot is because you represent them. If they don't deserve it, get off the mountain. Lech raid. Go down for the mountain because they no longer they not they not no longer deserve it, and therefore you no longer deserve it. Why? Because the leader is for the people, and the people are for the leader. If the people don't deserve it, the leader doesn't deserve it either. Moshe Beno, get off the mountain. And this explains one thing that went wrong. Moshe Beno was responsible for the spies, and if they if they botched up, and they went wrong, 
and the entire people complained about the Meraglim and the spies saying the commentaries, Moshe Rabbeinu is part of that sin of the spies. This is revolutionary. And how do we know it? Because the verse in Pashas Tavorim, this one verse that talks about Moshe's dying and not going into the land of Israel, is inserted into the story of the spies to hint to us that Moshe was held guilty for the sin of the spies too. And if they're not going to go in, Moshe's not going in either. Because he is them and they is, they is he, if that makes sense. And therefore, because they're going to die in the desert, he's going to die in the desert too. Unbelievable. By the way, this one commentary explains that Moshe was dying because of a combination of sins. In other words, one sin on its own wasn't sufficient. I'll get back to that point in a moment. Let me just highlight one other area that went wrong with Moshe and the spies. Is that we know that the wording was, God said to Moshe, Shlach Lecha. Shlach Lecha Anashim. That was the terminology. And the commentaries explain, what do you mean, shlach lecha, send for yourself? What do you mean, send for yourself? Basically, God was telling Moshe, it's your choice. If you want to send in spies into the land of Israel, that's okay, but it's your choice. you got to take responsibility for this. You can't, I'm not going to tell you to do it. Don't say you sent in spies because God said so. I'm not saying so at all. Moshe Beno says, to, says uh, God says to Moshe, I'm not telling you to send in the spies. If you want to send in the spies, you can send in the spies. That's your choice, but you're going to take responsibility for it. And so this is another explanation of why Moshe was held guilty for the sin of the spies is because he instigated it. Shlach lecha, Moshe Beno did it himself. He sent the spies in. And because he sent the spies in, he is therefore held guilty for the mistake of the spies. So there's two aspects here which the commentaries point out on of why God held Moshe guilty for the sin of the spies. One explanation is because he instigated it. Shlach lecha. Moshe Rabbeinu was the one that took responsibility when he took it upon himself to send in the spies. He did it himself and therefore he took responsibility for it. That's one explanation. Another explanation is that Moshe is dependent on the people. It's not so much the fact that he instigated it. It's that he is dependent on the people. And if the people go wrong, then he has no right to deserve better. If the people go wrong, get off the mountain, Moshe. If the people die in the desert, you're also going to die in the desert because you are responsible for their actions. So there's two aspects here that the commentaries highlight as reasons why Moshe was held guilty for the sin of the spies. But nonetheless, if we take this approach... If we take this approach, we got to take the approach that Moshe was held guilty for two sins, and that's why he, don't, he didn't go into the land. Two sins. It's a combination of both. And they both happened at two sides of the 40 years. The sin of the spies happened right at the beginning of the 30 years, of the 40 years in the desert. In fact, that's why we were punished on Tisha B'Av with 40 years of wandering in the desert because of the spies that happened 40 years earlier. So the first part of, of, that tra of, of his sin was at the beginning of the 40 years. The second part of the sin was later on, 40 years later, when it came to the hitting of the rock. And the Mephoshim, the commentators, explain it's a combination of both. In other words, one sin on its own would not have been sufficient or enough of a reason to punish Moshe to stay in the desert. But it was a combination of both. It was a combination of the first sin that happened at the beginning of the 40 years together with the spies. And then the second sin that happened at the end of the 40 years together with the hitting of the rock. And it's a combination of both. You know where else we see a person being punished as a result of a combination of sins? According to some of the commentaries, we know that Nadav and Avihu, who were two sons of Aaron, when they walked into the sanctuary. Oh, so Stephen Hurst says, that's right, Moshe and the Jewish people were one unit. Exactly. And if they weren't going in, he wasn't going to go in. Exactly. That's, that's Stephen Hurst's comment on YouTube. Just before I go on to Nadav and Avihu, I want to welcome everyone here. I see there's 
lots and lots of people online with us, which is fantastic, between Facebook and YouTube. So it's great to have you all with us. If you're just logging on, maybe put something in the comment and say hello. We'd love to welcome you personally or a question if you have one. You can also share with us your questions as well. I'd be happy to acknowledge them and to address them as well on our share for today. Great. Okay, so what happened with Nadav and Avil? Nadav and Avil were the sons of Aaron. They went into, into the Mishkan, into the tabernacle. They offered up an offering of incense, and suddenly they died. God sniffed their neshama out of their nostrils, and he was no longer alive. They both died. Right, they both died. What exactly was Nadav and Avil's problem? What did they do wrong? Do any of you know? Maybe you can share with us in the comments. What did Nadav and Avil, these two sons, do wrong? Come on, there, are, there are some famous, some famous reasons given for what for what these two sons of Aaron did wrong in the tabernacle. If any of you know the answer, just post them in the in the chat box. Let us know, let us know. Otherwise, I'll share it with you. Ah, thank you, Dawn. There we go. They brought a strange fire. Well done. Esh Zara is the terminology. There we go. Stephen Hur has added to the conversation as well. Esh Zara, it's a strange fire. Good. That was Nodavan Avil. Anyone know other reasons given for, for Nodavan Avil's death? There are other, other opinions. So if you know the other opinions, why don't you share them? Any other reasons given? Let's. Let's see if someone else knows. We'd love to hear from you. Anyone else? Okay. No. All right. So there's another reason given for what Nodav and Avil did wrong. And that was they were drunk. They're not, they were Kohanim that were drunk before coming into the service. Ah, Stephen Hur got it. Very good. They came in drunk into the service, into the sanctuary. Okay. Now, there's one or two other reasons given as well. It's not so relevant right now. But one of the commentaries actually explain... It seems the Miraglim and Golden Calf episodes, Brian writes, Miraglim and the Golden Calf episodes have shaped the destiny of Klal Yisrael. Was it complete forgiveness? I'm not so sure it's complete forgiveness, Brian. We haven't been completely forgiven because every year at Tisha B'Av we're still, that's part of it. In other words, God said, I'm going to accumulate the the, the issues of Tisha B'av, because of the Miraglim, because of the spies, Tisha B'av is going to remain a date of, of, of tragedy for the Jewish people. It's all because of the Miraglim. I don't believe it was complete forgiveness. We died. The generation died at that time. They weren't allowed to go into Israel. But the rest of the children and, and, and the descendants are still suffering from that day till today. We're still living with that sin of the golden of the miraglim of the spies, and I would say the same about the golden calf too. Hashem said that that after the golden calf, God said the same thing. I'm not going to I'm not going to destroy them all. I'm not going to annihilate the Jewish people. But every time I bring I bring punishment to them throughout history, it's going to carry within it a little bit of the golden calf as well. 
So, Brian, I think that answers your question. It's not complete forgiveness. And it has shaped the destiny of Klai Yisrael throughout the generations. And there, too, we see the concept of accumulating Averot. Accumulating Averot so that God actually rebukes us or he punishes us with a combination of a few sins together. The other example of that was Nodav and Avil. The commentaries explain that Nodav and Avil died in the sanctuary because of the cumulative, cumulative uh, transgressions that they had transgressed. And they walked in drunk was one of it. And they offered up a foreign, a, foreign, a foreign sacrifice. That was another one of it. It was a combination of both. And the same thing by Moshe Rabbein. Moshe Rabbein was punished that he couldn't go into the land of Israel, not only because he hit the rock, but it was a combination of the Miraglim and the rock. He was held guilty for both of those, of those sins in the desert. And that's why Moshe Rabbein wasn't able to go into the land. I do want to mention, before we wrap up right now, is that Rashi doesn't agree with this. And that's why most people don't know this. It's because Rashi's commentary says that Moshe Benel had nothing wrong against his name, no black blemish, no black stamp against Moshe's name, beside the fact that he hit the rock. And by the way, many people ask the question, is that fair? He hit the rock and therefore he lost out on the land of Israel? Does that make sense? That's Rashi's opinion. Rashi says Moshe Rabbeinu had nothing else wrong with him besides the fact that he hit the rock. And that's where everyone has that question. Well, according, and, and, and we'll leave Rashi's opinion for now. But according to the other commentaries that I've shared with you today, that Bar Benel and, 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 and others, Moshe actually had a cumulative sins. One was being part of the sin of the spies and one was hitting the rock. And this explains why Moshe's punishment was very severe, but it was an equal to everyone else in that generation. Everyone in that generation, because they were involved in the sin of the, sin of the spies, they died. No one else was going to go into Israel. If we believe that Moshe was part of that too, it sort of makes sense that this was his transgression. Uh, he, this was his sin, and therefore this is his punishment, that he's going to rem remain in the desert uh, and not go into the land of Israel. So hopefully that gives you a bit of insight it's 11 o'clock. We've got to wrap up. Thank you all for joining. I just want to mention that tonight we have a fantastic program online on Zoom. It's called From the Rapper to the Rabbi. We'll be learning a – will be, we'll, we'll be shared a fantastic story tonight. So if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to. The direct link for the show is sitchell.coza forward slash rapper. If you put that into your URL, into your internet connection, you'll be able to join us 8 o'clock this evening. We look forward to having you online with us then. Have a wonderful day ahead. Keep safe, keep sane, keep spiritual, and take care. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m. on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.